Hello everybody, and welcome back to Tony Northeastern, and I hope you're all keeping us safe and well. And most of all, you're enjoying your model railways. Um, if you haven't got one, I'm sure you're enjoying this scratch build. So, so far, so good. Um, I'm pleased with the way it's coming together. Um, last week I did struggle a little bit to get the handrails inside but I uh, managed to get that done and um, now we can move on to other areas um, so basically this week we'll be cutting all the cards for both sets of rooms um, uh, it's possible that I won't be sticking them together just yet because well you know me, I'm going to add detail into all four of these rooms. Now, <laughs> it's going to be very tricky because where I'm going to hide the cables. Um, I'm lucky enough to have the ladies and gents either side, the two rooms that I'm not going to be doing anything with. The cables can be lobbed down through here, through a hole in the baseboard and then um, final connections underneath but there's a lot of cables um, there's going to be an LED for here there's already an LED fitted um, in the uh, entrance way there just above the ceiling um, plus the, the LED for this room that room and the two LEDs on the other side so there's going to be a lot of cables uh, unlike shields, I haven't got a spare room where I can have um, a terminal block with all the connections can go to. So it, the, all the cables will have to come out through the baseboard. So I'm going to drill a hole here and through there. So that's the plan. But the plan for this week is to cut all the walls all the floors and then hopefully we can do one room at a time but uh, we'll just have to see how far we get to this week so let's get cracking before we start getting carried away um, cutting the walls for both sides of the main booking hall there's a little bit of work left to do to this um, booking hall, as it were. As you can see on this side, where the wall returns round, I've added a piece of brick paper, brick sheet paper. Now it's quite weak, this little bit. So what I've done is, on the inside, I've run a little bit of super glue down the inside, as well as gluing the card to this front edge. So that's what I've done there. So what I want to do here is replicate what I've done here and put it on uh, this side. So I'll put all the um, bearers in for the various floors and put some card sheet across the top here. And once I've done that, then I can put this aside and then concentrate on the other um, rooms as it were. I have placed the building onto the platforms so we can um, take some measurements and as you can see I've added the brick here and down this uh, side which hides the gap that was under there so basically that card now follows the uh, imprint if you like of the platforms so I've taken some measurements and um, the idea now is we shall make the walls to go around this baseboard and um, split the rooms up. As you can see I've added three by two cards here and here so we've got a nice edge to put up to uh, to glue the walls to the main building. And uh, I had a comment regarding the station masters office which is this office here should have a window here but there's a canopy going along there 
and um, it'll only get in the way of the window. Anyway, if he comes out his office door and turns right, oh, there he is already. He must be checking the timetable against his watch there, see when the next train's coming in. Looking pretty quiet. Must be late. Anyway, so that's the answer there. Um, Station Master has got his own big window there for viewing the trains coming in and out. And we could just about see him there. I have just placed the walls around the platforms there and it does look quite an imposing building and um, yeah and I think I've used every single millimeter available to the size uh, that I've been allocated and it's right up against the jar of walls there I've got about um, two millimeter clearance but by the time I get the card on there I'm going to lose a millimetre there as well. So yeah, so it's going to be quite tight for uh, this little building. And as you can see, there's not a lot of room there for a road. It's about 60 millimetres there. So that's, that's it. And if you've noticed, I've continued the wall past the back wall and what I'm going to do there is leave the ends bare so I can add the uh, extensions of the wall if you like as it continues down the platform so now you're beginning to get an idea of what is going to happen with this build Right, so I shall carry on marking out for the windows. Here we are, we're back at the bench, and I'm just marking out the positioning of the windows on these cards. Um, just making sure they are, are at the correct heights. Now, I have left 12 millimeters between each floor. So that's the ground floor window, and that's the upper floor window. And uh, yeah, it works out uh, roughly about 38mm from there to, to the ceiling, which is roughly about there, I'd say. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a change from the drawing. Um, the drawing is only ever, or was, a guide, um, because as you building something like this things do change um, so if I was um, issuing drawings to the builders I'm sure this will be issue 23 or something like that because there's been that many changes as we've been going along so if you remember from the original drawing I'm still keeping them fairly apart because I've got to allow for a chimney to go up the centre. Uh, that's something we haven't touched on yet. Now the chimney is going to be inside the wall rather than outside the wall, if you know what I mean. So you won't see it on this face because it'll be on the back face. So it'll be inside the building. But. Uh, Yeah, we'll, we'll touch on that as we go. Coming back to the drawing again, the centres for these windows, now that there's going to be two there and two on the top, um, I shall keep them centres because they are measured out already for me uh, when I did the drawing uh, a few months back. So that will not change, well that configuration there won't change and um, what I do recommend is to keep sharpening your pencil 
to make sure you get the the lines uh, quite true to the components because um, what happens is if you don't the lines end up thicker um, you, you want to be able to cut the lines um, out in the center of the lines if you make the lines too thick you could end up cutting out more card than you need to and it will make life a little bit difficult later when you come to fit the windows We have moved on a little bit and I thought I'd mention um, about corners, um, especially if you're building a prototypical building um, and how you get the um, nice and neat joints like this. Um, if you look at the edge there you can see where I've got an overlap and uh, that's what we want to quickly mention. Um, I'm in the process of doing the walls as you've seen but what I've done here I haven't cut the windows out yet but I have left the brick sheet two millimeters over the main wall that the idea there is is to overlap the joints so you don't see the flat edge you have there like so. So once that's glued you'll end up with a nice neat corner which can always be um, touched up later on with some paint. So I just thought I'd uh, mention that before I crack on any further. Um, yeah and also if your joining card end on as well make sure you leave a little bit of card there ready for the next wall to join onto it. Obviously this overlap is, is a bit short um, but if you turn it around but that's the idea you're getting so you've got an overlap to allow the wall to be extended. This joint will be hidden as you'll see as the build progresses. So I just thought I'd mention that about overlaps and calculating for them. Always add two mil extra on the cord or um, or less, depending on how you configure your walls and uh, which way you decide to join them together. Always allow for your overlaps. Right, what I'm doing now is I'm just marking the brick sheet in here ready for cutting and forming the brick sheet around the inside of the card walls. Uh, which I'm just setting up the rule for 2.5mm. Um, that's allowing for the pencil of course. Um, I have noticed in the comments that a couple of you guys, or a few of you guys, are actually going to have a go at uh, building your own stations, which is, is brilliant because um, it's, it's what I'd, I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear that people are having a go at scratch building for themselves. But uh, I do find by doing that, you're adding something unique and yours to your layout. Um, yeah, so that's that's great news. Uh, and please keep me informed on, on how you're getting on. Um, yeah, great stuff. So this is just so we can form the card to come round the edges. Um, there's a lot of these to do. There's 16 windows in total. Um, for the main building so there's a lot of work to get through um, as you know I mean nowhere near as many as I have to do for so shields but uh, that's the idea so I'll just cut those bits out and then fold these flaps in over and then fit the windows 
I thought I'd just show you this. I've got a little bit of a tight window here and uh, I've already put the glue onto the return flaps which comes inside the card. So what I'm doing now just to give that a little fraction more for the window to squeeze in is just pressing home along the folded card there. Because it's a foam card you can normally get 0.5 mil more um, just by squeezing the card just like so now the window should just pop in I just thought I'd show you that because on the odd occasion it sometimes happened and then we just push that in so the window ledge comes flush to the front of the brick wall and just push the window in so slightly so you just, just get that little that's the detail I like where the corner of the brick goes round um, with the window frame instead of just having a card cut edge there and then what we do we just turn that round once the glue's gone off you can just pair that excess off with a, a blade very sharp blade. Right, so that now is ready for super gluing in. So a couple of drops of super glue on each corner. That just holds the window frame in place. And I just run the super glue down there. Right, so that's the first one done. Only 14 more windows to do. The windows are coming along quite well. Uh, there's no issues there. But I just want to show you uh, this before I start cutting out any more of these windows. Now this is the um, left hand side of the building. Where the wall is up against the jarrow walls as it were where there's not a lot of space for anything else so what I've done is I've decided to put in this single door just in there it's just to make believe that there's a, another um, maintenance exit on this side um, of the station now the walls themselves finish up to this point here so what I want to show you here is pop that out is I've cut the card nice and flush with the edges here and I've scraped it back with a sharp blade to make sure it's flat and then what I'll do then I'm using a thicker card because um, I want to hide the edge of the platform so once this is glued in to the platform height which is there it should hide any of the edges obviously there'll be a uh, a plinth edge as well like a brick plinth edge uh, so not only that I have left a little bit of a gap there where we can adjoin the extension of the walls to it so we've got a 10 millimeter flap there plus the 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 card joint and then obviously there'll be an overlapping of card again so this is, comes like a dovetail joint um, I just thought I'd mention that and uh, yeah that's how I intend to do the side walls on the platform in sections because otherwise it'll be just too long and too big to handle now we're focusing on the window sills and lintels um, the window sills are 2 mil wide and the lintels are 2.5 mil wide and basically all I'm doing is just making up the lintels and windowsills at least a millimetre past the window there and almost two millimetres past the windows at the top with a chamfer going up over so they look more or less like um, terraced house windows really but uh, that's the effect uh, I'm getting. Um, 
I'm not too worried about the blue brick because I'm going to have a, um, a plinth which will cover that up which will be roughly about 10 mil high and it'll go right round the building that's going to be painted grey and uh, that's going to change the, the look of the building again and um, going back to the lintels I've made a little template up so it might appear to make up a little template um, for your, your lintels um, yeah so that's how that's working out and it's working out quite well I think it looks quite realistic it's got to be, they've got to be painted yet um, so here we are we've uh, this is on the right hand side of the building um, as we go around the corner, as you can see, I've left um, a bare spot there for where the wall can continue on, so it'll be like a tilt-tail joint, as you can see. So the card will overlap it both sides, and once it's glued, it'll be quite solid. So, yeah, so that's what I'm focusing on now, the lintels and the window sills. And I'm just using a little bit of uh, PVA wood glue just to put glue them in place. Um, using the PVA wood glue just gives us a little bit more time with the glue um, to move the card into place because it does tend to, yeah once that's in place can just wipe off the excess glue with a Q-tip. And there uh, yeah. Just press it home. Just allow for the glue to go off. And uh, once that's painted grey, it'll look quite neat I think. Meanwhile we'll just carry on with the lintels. So I've got a little template there, I'm just making sure it's flush to the edge of the card that we've already just cut for the mitre and then we'll just push the blade to the template and then just cut. It's easy as that. And then we'll just flip it over and then you've already got the mitre there to continue with another one. And this is what the windows, sills and lintels look like once they've been painted. I've painted them in the grey, uh, the same grey that I used on the columns. And also I've done the uh, one of the large windows, um, which there'll be many more of these to come once all the other walls are joined to this wall. So this is the right hand side wall. So this is the station master's office here the ticket office and then obviously that will either be the gents or the ladies but there you go and obviously this is what it looks like on the other side so you can see I'm already preparing for this wall to put up against the main booking hall so what I'm doing now is I'm going to glaze all these windows and then I'm going to divide the rooms up by putting the supports in for the card and uh, that's what I'll do next. With the glazing fit that completes the finishing of the windows for the main building and um, as you can see with this window here it has the frosted finish uh, we went into that last week uh, if I just flip this round you can see how I have fitted the glazing. It's roughly a millimeter um, narrower and a millimeter less in height than the original window frame and that allows the glue to seep in, in the gaps and then fix the window in place. Uh, I use the rocket card glue uh, when it dries it goes like a glazed finish like clear glaze finish and um, it, you can't really notice the glue on it turn it around and go really close 
can see what I mean, you can't see any glue around the edges. Right, so let's have a look at the progress we've done this week. I see Bob the Bricky has done well. He can afford a brand new car. Look at that. Mind you, he's earned it this week. Right, so this is the progress this week. I mean, I think I was right to go up a story either side of the main hall because uh, that it looks it looks far better than I imagined. I, I wasn't too sure when I decided. Right, let's add an extra floor. But uh, yeah, glad I did now. Alright, so, we've come to an end of another video. And things are starting to take shape at last. Thanks for watching now. Catch you again next time. Bye.